So I think it was about a month ago, someone requested that I do a spread of drawing birds. Oh yeah, it was on the video where I drew horses. And they're like, oh, I love when you draw animals. I don't know why I made that voice, but they'd like to see me try and draw some birds. I thought that would be fun, but then I kind of forgot about it. And then I was on the Pinterest. I came across a little colorful blob. It happened to be a bird. Ew. I'm shedding. And I was basically hit full force with just how great of an idea that was. There's lots of colors, lots of blobs. So we're gonna dive into the sketchbook and draw some little uh, blurbies. So I thought we could start with this little blue bird. It's a color combo I don't usually go for, so it's like blues and browns. I'll have the Pinterest board linked below. This will be the first one, I think. This looks like a bit of an oval shape right here. And then this second oval shape kind of protrudes from that one. And then the little beak comes out here with the eyeball around there. And this is actually a little bit straighter here. So those two ovals kind of connect, rounds off at the front and then protrudes here. The most excited part right now is to do like the colors. I don't know why I'm feeling so inspired just by color off camera. <laughs> I've been doing some acrylic painting because it's something I want to improve on. Right now I'm just focusing on mixing colors and things like that. So I haven't been drawing what I usually gear towards. I've been doing more like landscapes and clouds. It's helping me really focus on the colors and like placing the colors in the right places by using references. Kind of like what I'm doing here, but for painting, sitting on something. Something about drawing off camera is just extra relaxing for me. I guess painting specifically, because I think when I paint on camera, I feel like I have to do it as quickly as I draw and my experience levels are different. So it doesn't make sense that that would even be the case, but it's kind of how my brain fights me. So confused by this foot. Look at this little thing. I'm trying to figure out if these are actually two feet or just one foot. I also didn't leave enough space for the tail feathers. Connecting fleshy bit here. And then the color looks like it breaks up around here. Just trying to find some extra shapes in there. Definitely gonna be tricky to get the blob shape perfect. We'll do our best here. Last time I really drew a bird was when I did that uh, taking no shortcuts video. I feel like I was just very bitter by the end of it. Hopefully we don't have the same result here. I think his belly protrudes a little bit more. Whatever goes wrong or right with this, I can take that into the next one here. Take what we can get from this. I'm gonna take my line art. This is a 0.5 fine liner. I'm gonna do the darkest black, so like the eye with a little highlight there. The beak. I was gonna color in this little shadow here, but I wanna see where the colors end up before I do that. But I can do this foot, I think. All right, now before I do the line art on the whole thing, I wanna try just doing color. I'm thinking we'll start with like a light blue. That might be a good place to start. It's like a desaturated pale blue. So we can do like these highlights here on the edge. We can probably go way past that because uh, the dark color will layer on top just fine. But we don't want to go anywhere that there's going to be brown. We'll move on to a slightly darker blue. Lapis lazuli. This is sky blue. Sky blue looks more accurate, but we might be able to use this for like the deeper areas around like the face and stuff. Kind of hoping I have something just slightly less dark than this to be able to mix between the two. This is kind of where paint would probably be better. Check my Ohu markers. Cerulean blue. Oh, hold on to that. Something a little less saturated. Cloud blue. That's a nice desaturated one, but it's still on the green side. It's darker than I thought it was. This might be the next step though. This isn't something I've ever done with markers. This is kind of more pulling into what I've been doing with the acrylic paints. Start in the darkest areas and blend outwards. This area should almost be black, but I'm just too scared to go all in. I'm gonna have both of these opened so that I can quickly blend them out. This has been really fun because I feel like there's a lot more of a relaxing brain power that's required. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep building this up because we need this to be actually quite dark, but we want there to be white spaces in between to give the illusion of feathers. Grab this next darkest color, build them up, fade them out. Let's use our middish tone blue here. Blend that out with the lightest one. Specs for feathers and texture. You don't have to draw out every single line, even if you want it to be a cartoony style. You can use coloring to kind of do that for you. My lightest I'm using is baby blue. My mid-tone kind of that I'm using is sky. For the darkest ones, I'm using lapis lazuli. Basically, I'm just switching between these three, depending on what color I'm looking for, and blending them out with the, the closest relative to get these tones. Draw on some of these longer feathers. 
those lines will probably disappear with blending, but they can stick around. I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> And you can kind of see that I'm still in a little bit of the lighter territory. I'll probably end up layering even more of the darkest blue over top afterwards, depending on how the contrast works between the oranges. Stick into the mid-tone and then seeing what happens. A little more detail around the eye. Gonna add feather texture to the edge of that so it's not a straight line. That color is the same as this, but it's after it's been blended over with the lighter color. So you can kind of see how much effect you can have with just two markers. I'm trying to keep the sections of feathers separate. So I'm using the lighter color to separate the feathers. And then I'm using straight lines for the actual feathers. And then blending out the ends with the light color. So it kind of like looks like it's coming from someplace. Now there's a deep shadow right here. That's what I was going to color in black, but I didn't. So let's add that in with this darkest blue. Leave the straight edge on the top and then try and blend out the bottom. I might use that right under this, the same kind of shadow. Add in some just like unblended of this blue. Texture! It's definitely not as hyper detailed, but it's exactly what I wanted to do. All right, now we need to find this very desaturated tan color. I might have to layer them with grays, but here we have spring orange, one of my favorite orange colors. It's fairly beige. Those two are so similar. What? That actually looks very similar to like right here. I think I could probably just go ahead and use this right around the face. Just kind of filling in the areas where I see this color. And then I'm gonna use that most saturated one, the spring orange. I think I'll just fill in everything. We'll go over that with something darker to create the texture. Obviously this is a lot more saturated than the reference, but this area is gonna get loaded with a lot of other colors. Doesn't really matter now, does it? Markers are all really about layering. And now we need to definitely darken that up out here. So I'll try with the barely beige to kind of figure out where I want. Oh shoot, oh, that's not so bad. That could have been worse. If it like spreads out like that one did, it's a little overfill, dry it a bit. I want to layer this whole front section because it's not really getting any light here. Definitely need something darker than that though. What about raw umber from my Ohuwu? A little too dark, but we might be able to use that for the shading areas. Potato brown. Light suntan. So we have, again, we have a light, a mid, and a dark. Well, let's try that. Actually, we need the mid-tone, which was potato brown. Let's find the textures. Then we'll blend that out again with our lightest one getting darker. Just keep switching. Just keep switching. I want to add the shadow in with our raw umber. Potato. Shading to the light with our lightest tone that we're using right now. Now I need to color in the white area, which I think I overlapped a little too much, but maybe a white gel pen might be able to save us there. Now we need like a little gray. Maybe these two. Add in these shadows. There's a shadow under these feathers. Blend that out. It should be darker here. Desaturate this area. This also needs a little desaturation. Also this beak. Add a little bit of highlights where I went too dark. Kind of bring up this area here. If you go while the markers are still a little, well, they haven't dried completely, the white gel pen will actually absorb some of the color and just become a pastel version of it. That's a fun trick. A little around the eye and maybe a little highlights in some of these feathers. I think it looks like a blurb and that's what I wanted to draw so we're good. <laughs> I want to do another one though like fill up this space. One second. Whoa look at this guy. What even is that? Oh they're so pretty. What do I pick? Okay this is the American Goldfinch. I think that's a good next one. It's basically black and yellow and its feet are like a reddish brown. I wonder if I could try and draw this exactly to size. So the head's like here, you got the big blurb blob here, the wing here, this, this, one foot here. And then this is actually connected. So the head actually kind of starts here it looks like and comes around. It's kind of where the beak comes from. The eyeballs around there and then there's this big dark patch right here. The cool thing about all birds is that even if they're like the same bird, the pattern can vary just the smidgiest so you don't have to get it perfect. There's a weird line like right after the eye and there's a bit of shadow here and you have the body coming around this way. The wing actually comes up like this and then there's kind of feathers. So I just realized this wing actually comes out here, like here. 
Now it's a little harder because this is so dark in the reference to kind of see the feathers. Here, the blue, I was able to see like the sections and how it was sort of built. But this might be a little trickier. It kind of looks like there's something here, something here, and then something like right here. And then this kind of like sticks up this way, kind of comes down this way. Because I am having, whoa, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun and just so happy to be doing this. And there's a branch coming out here. We'll shorten this one. So next, what did I do last time? I did a little bit of wire. Drawing the eyeball. There's a lot of black on here, so I wonder if I should just do that first. I might do line art for these feet, just so we don't lose them. Maybe the color will just hide this too. Today's just not a line art day. That's good enough for now. I think what I'll do is use a dark gray first for the black areas. This, and avoid like the white areas of the black. That way I can go over it again, not to create any texture that I feel like it's missing. Right here there's a strange patch, so I'm not gonna color that in. Another strange patch. Don't wanna get too close to the yellow in case I decide that needs to be more yellow. This is all black here. Trying to find the shapes in there. Kind of like what I was doing with the sketch, but now in a more like blocky form. Another good reason to use gray instead of black right now, because then I can actually add in the feathers with something darker and then blend it out. I think that's as much as I can do right now. I like the weird shapes I found in there. So now we need to find a yellow. Cadmium yellow first. A little more on the orange side. I might have to go into the Ohus for this. My yellows are lacking. Sunflower. Kind of like Y19, but it's a little less saturated. Okay, that's a little too orange. Gonna be just straight up orange. Not gonna work. I really like that color though. Oh, here we go. I think if we use this and a mixture of those two, we should be good. Start with the lightest color, and I think we just go over the whole thing, especially the areas that are the lightest. And I don't want to blend out the gray, so I'm not gonna touch that. Blend that out. I feel like it's not quite as saturated as the real bird. This one I went too saturated. This one is not saturated enough, but I guess that's probably more the colors that I have to work with. This area actually down here is all darker. For more shadow here. So with this yellows, I'm not seeing as much of the feather texture coming through, but I'm really liking the yellow to orange kind of color, even though it's not quite what the reference has. I think it just looks nice illustratively. The three marker trick seems to be very, very handy here. Just kind of switch between them, if you can remember which one's which. Let me color in this, mix to the next one here. A little texture, just because it's missing everywhere else, I feel like. Those lines are a little harsh. Almost don't want to add the desaturation because it just looks so cute to me. We might dabble. We also need a slightly pinky color for the legs. I'm thinking like ash rose. Very desaturated. Maybe with pinkish white. The ash rose again. Might need something even darker than that. Maybe with a little bit of gray on top. I might also use this gray for this strange section and over here. So down here, this needs to be pretty dark. I'll layer it with this gray first and add like a feather texture more with this. Smudge out the lines. This is all very white. I'll just clean up the edges with this color. Try and give it more of a feather texture. Try in the feathers again. Oh, that was one of the ones I must have filled. Shoot. Go over the bottom of this. Desaturate it. Looking cool on top of this warm color, I think. How about neutral gray too? This is still a lot more contrast, so I think I will add in an even darker color. I suppose this will look. Add in some feather texture. Make it less gray. Same thing up here. Texture up the edges of the two colors a little bit more. I do think we need a little more line art. I'm also trying to decide if things should be darker. I'm gonna try adding the line art to the B. I don't feel like it's separated enough. Just add a little bit of something around it to give it that more illustrative style. We need something darker. A little shadow under here. Just doing the line art, I feel like it tells me this definitely needs to be a little darker. But I think I'll leave them for now. I wanna do one more bird. We got a space here. I might just doodle a little birdie. See if I've learned anything. I really focused on the blobbiness. What color do I do? A pink bird? That looks like a dove. Maybe I'll grab my pumpkin orange. Had it in some interesting places. 
little blue. There's my little birdie. Go back to my collection. I really did want to do the blue jay. It's a little less blobby than some of the ones I've been doing. Grab the blue pencil. I gotta draw it kind of small if I'm gonna fit it here. The tail comes out that way. Body would be here and then it has that like pointy head. Neck here. Head tail back there. Kind of looking upwards a little. I don't know if you've ever met a blue jay but they're kind of mean. No offense. I gotta shrink it. Wait I really want to draw these feathers but we're gonna need a smaller bird. Leg sticking out here, and then this is where the tail sticks out. And then the face is looking this direction. So if you line that up, there's this piece, the beak, the eyes actually lines up with this line. And that's all black here, I think. This is black, and there's this pokey bit there. Find the head in there. It has that cool little toupee of a different color blue. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're kind of mean birds. They're just prematurely balding and it's taken a stain on their confidence. I'm gonna move this leg just a smidge lower. This is a lot trickier, I gotta admit. The blobby ones are easier. Something's not coming quite as naturally. Need some longer feathers there, shorter feathers here. I think this section might be too long. Maybe just bring these wings up a little. That's an improvement. It's also like the chest is sticking out here and this is a wing. There we go, I think I found what I was looking for. Okay, take our liner and draw in the eyeball. Extra since there's so much black around the eye again with this one. And I can get a lot more detail with this than I will be with the thicker brush tip of the marker. I don't want to do too much because it is fun figuring out the shape sometimes with the color. But there's a little bit of black right here. For all the textures here, I think we'll do that with color as well. We'll do that with color. This was the darkest blue. But oh, who's darker? Nope. There we go. Straight up black. This. Tempted to throw in here. Sorry, got distracted. I think I will just use black, but I think I'm gonna do the blue first. We'll use the lightest blue I've got. Frost blue. Oh, I do have something lighter. Pale Celestine. I'm using this to color in the white. I might use like a warm gray to shade it. If that's possible. Because it does look a little bit warmer than the blues, you know? Use the lightest gray I've got. Neutral too. This will end up looking much whiter once we add in the rest of the blue. I can just kind of find the lines now before I add in the darkest colors. This will all be black. Darker gray for this beak. And the eye as well. This is also white. Gray for shading. I think I could probably use this also to mark out the black for now. Oh wait, I was waiting on the blue. I keep getting ahead of myself. This area of blue is less saturated than this area of blue. What I need is this color. I need something less green. Maybe if I blend these two together. Let's try it. Right now it's a little too dark, so hopefully if I blend that out. Okay, so it is kind of dark, but I'm thinking once I start adding in the black, it's not gonna seem so dark. I think we'll be good. Patchier than I was anticipating, but I might be able to go over that and get like that feather texture that I like added in. I can kind of put this away. I do want to add in the black up there though now. I think it'll just make it look really good and it's gonna get me excited and then I'm gonna be so excited to finish this. See how that like just makes stuff come together? It comes down a little further. I love the way that looks. That looks really cool. Trying to figure out what the next step is. Like I don't want to mess up the texture in these feathers because they have so many spots. I guess I kind of just have to wing it. <laughs> wing it. That's funny. Need something a little darker than this. Add in feathers. We'll just do piece by piece and hope for the best. I'm just gonna have to like go piece by piece. Kind of actually quite confusing. Figure out where to put these lines. I might just have to like kind of make it up because I'm gonna miss spots. Start adding in some of these lines. Find the feathers. Definitely needs another one like right here. I might just have to use the white gel pen for white. I think it's one of those things that I'm just getting too close to what I'm looking at. But once I take a step back, it's just gonna look like a blue jay. And that little area right there needs to be much darker. Color in this little gap, this dark blue. And go over that with my darkest gray. I want to do the same thing like right here. Kind of give the illusion of some feathers. 
I'm going to use this color from up there to kind of separate the feathers a little. Bring the color down so it doesn't seem so separate. White gel pen. Add in some white feathers. Darken these up. A little white gel pen here. Bring that a little brighter. All right, now we just have to really do this piece. I can just take this color, draw in the feathers in big strokes like that, and then add in our stripes to some of them. So it looks like it's not on all of them. Blend that out. Same thing here. And then the center ones don't look like they have anything, but then the ones on the sides do. Blend, blend, blend. There's actually some little white feathers at the bottom, but I drew mine too big. But you get the picture. This is definitely trickier than like the more globular ones. Add a little liner. Refine some of the white areas. And up here too, probably. You want to darken up the eyeball, make it really pop. Add a little contrast in there. Hey! I like this spread. I feel like it needs a little something in it. What we could do is that little green background. It's kind of the wrong green. I want something more yellowy. Maybe behind this one we get something blue. That's like the perfect blue to go with that yellow. Sometimes things go right. Make this stick show up. I'm gonna turn these into little stars. That's my sketchbook. I can do whatever the heckity I want to. Okay, see now the spread kind of like fills it a bit better. This color honestly would have worked really well over here. Layer a little. What should I use for this? Light gray. Oh, it's a little too dark. Nice little winter bird. The gray makes it feel like a winter bird. Ta-da! I just love spreads with a ton of color and marker. So we drew three birds and a blob. This one was like really fun when I was doing it. This one was stressful. This one was fun and turned out good. I'm trying to pick a fave. Which one's your favorite? I'm kind of inclined to say this one just because it's yellow. But I also kind of like the texture of this and the texture of this. I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Let me know which one's your favorite. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for coming along with me as I filled another spread in my sketchbook. This time drawing blurbs with my alcohol-based markers. I used a mixture of Copic and Ohu. I hope you enjoyed. See you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening. Full of wobbles. Bye.